Hello everyone, my name is Jackson Cao from Lepton AI. Today I'm gonna give a talk about auto-scaling platform for running large language models. So let's do this. LLMs now possesses versatile capabilities including code completion, summarization, and maybe translation or do math problems. As businesses increasingly rely on those larger language models to drive innovation or provide critical services. The challenge of managing those resources become paramount. Due to their size and complexity, they may require dramatically uh, substantial computational power, and that could even vary with the M and the flow of workloads. Let's take Elmo as an example. Elmo, which is a summarization tool from Lepton AI for web, for web browsers. And we can see that this rapid growth is evident in the graph on the left, showing a significant increase in the number of requests from March to May. And the traffic doubles roughly every two weeks. However, this rapid growth in traffic brings with it challenges. The graph on the right highlights how traffic is distributed over 24-hour period, indicating peak times around midday. This uneven traffic distribution presents a significant challenge in keeping those services to be both efficient and cheap. So, we implement some tricks to help address these challenges. I'm thrilled to share that, to my best knowledge, we are the first platform to support both co-location and segmentation strategies for LLM deployments. But before diving into that, let me first walk you through the modeling techniques listed here, including speculative decoding and sticky routing. On this slide, I will first demonstrate how large language models typically operate, followed by an explanation of speculative decoding. As of vanilla decoding, the model generates tests in an autoregressive manner, predicting one token at a time. This process can be quite slow as it generates all of the tokens sequentially. On the other side, speculative decoding first generate multiple token candidates at once, and then we feed them into a verification stage and eventually select the right one. Here we can see this method significantly speed up the process because it involves only one generation step to achieve multiple tokens which could be quite helpful for those cases which requires fast responses. But sometimes we may still face that the pretend drop the model for speculative decoding may not adapt well to the specific prompts encountered in production. This situation is referred to as a misaligned case. For example, in this case, the user may ask what is the value of the pi, and our model cannot predict that precisely. It may give a, an incorrect and or less optimal out, output for a given input. To address this, we employ online fine-tuning trick. We use real prompt data to fine-tune the model in an online manner, which means the, 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 the prompt data is fed into this job model in real time and the training process is behind this scene seamlessly. This allows the model to optimize itself on the fly, improve, improving its performance and accuracy continuously. By combining speculative decoding with online fine-tuning, we ensure that our model remains adaptable even in dynamic and unpredictable production settings. Here, overall, we can see that 2.3x speed up is achieved compared to the baseline setting of LOM inference. 
Now, let's talk about sticky routing and prompt caching. In many applications, users may engage in multi-round conversations with these models. For example, a user may ask, tell me a best bedtime story. And then he may follow up to ask another question about the story told by LLM. Then we can see that there might be some redundant part in, the, in those prompts he is highlighted in blue text. To handle such interactions efficiently, we introduce sticky routing and prompt caching. Sticky routing ensures that a user's requests tend to be routed to same GPU or replica. By caching prompts and their responses, we can avoid such repeated computation and this significantly reduce the latency for the request and enhance user experience to a large extent. Here, this is the basic design of our prompt caching architecture. Load and store operations for this cache are dispatched asynchronously before and after each layer's execution of the transformer. And this often incurs minimal overhead, which can be disregarded compared to the significant speed up gained from this feature. And we can see here is a two level cache design where L1 cache is located on the local GPU memory specific to each replica, store those most frequently accessed prompts and responsives on GPU specifics specific to that replica, which means the storage size is limited but pretty fast. And L2 cache is shared across multiple GPUs on disk or memory, and it provides larger storage compared to L1 cache and ensure consistency between those replicas. All of this ensures that the latency of the user's request could be optimized and under control. Now, let's move on to the most exciting part, auto scaling. Traditionally, we just gather essential running statistics, including QPS, which means queries per second, time, and TTFT, which refers to time to first token, and maybe throughput, CPU, GPU utilization, and temporal matrix to precisely predict and manage those workloads. But what makes it, it distinct from a traditional autoscaler in respect of LLM serving? Let's see. Basically, we got two types of deployments for large language models, which includes co-location and segmentation. In the context of co-location, we have fully functional replica, which means that it handles both prevailing and decoding tasks, and each of them is self-sufficient, capable of managing all, risk, all, all aspects of workload independently of each other. Well, on the other hand, segmentation separates the, these tasks across specialized replicas. We do have distinct prevailing and decoding replicas working collaboratively. Both strategies have their problems and cons. Let's uh, take a deep look at them. Here is the illustration of co-location. All the prevailing and the decoding tasks are combined into a single task queue. However, latency for the generation can be unpredictable because the prevailing tasks and decoding tasks interfere with each other. To address this, prevailing tasks are split, split into chunks which can help to improve the latency of the ongoing decoding task. Additionally, we can further enhance throughput by integrating chunked prevailing tasks with decoding tasks. This is because commonly those decoding tasks are memory-bound problems, while the prevailing tasks are computer-bound. This is the optimal solution for 
single GPU deployment. Well, still we see the latency of those token generations is still indeterministic. As of segmentation, we are pleased to see that the community is also utilizing these technologies. How AI Lab refers to this approach as disaggregation. So the working principle is essentially the same. They observe that when setting a minimum threshold for user experience, such as 400 milliseconds for TTFT, which means time to first second, a first token, and four. 40 milliseconds for TPOT, which means time per output token. Then only 1.6 requests per second per GPU can be achieved. However, if we expand from one GPU to three GPU, we can see that number doubles, reaching 3.3 requests per second per GPU. This indicates that LLMs on GPU does not scale linearly. The graph illustrates the relationship between latency and workload for two strategies while using the same number of GPUs. By setting an acceptable latency limit, we identify two intersection points, D1 and D2, which we call them decision points. Here, D1 indicates that the co-location strategy should be used until the workload reaches this point. And as the workload continues to increase, our auto scaler will scale up and switch to segmentation mode. The gray area represents the improved performance compared to the co-location strategy. And after D2, this process repeats itself as the load increases. So let's think it easy. Auto scaling for large language models does not simply increase or decrease the number of GPUs. It flexibly predicts and chooses the best, the optimal strategy between co-location and the segmentation. When the workload is low, it just maintains minimal number of GPUs. However, our auto scaler will switch from collocation to segmentation as soon as the workload is regarded to reach that decision point. And at that point, segmentation performs better than collocation. Here, let's revisit, revisit the Elmo case by deploying with Lepton AI's auto scaling platform. We achieved over 40% cost savings on average compared to the traditional deployment method while still maintaining a high level of user experience, which is really exciting. Let's recap and conclude the progress we made to make the Lepton AI platform both performant and cost efficient. Firstly, we built a faster inference engine with the help of customized speculative decoding method with online fine tuning capability and highly optimized prompt caching and GPU kernels and finally heterogeneous arc with support of both CUDA and ROCKM. The most important thing is that we got the capability of auto-managing LLM services between co-location and segmentation modes which help us to further reduce the cost for LM serving. Thank you.